let's start. Hello. <coughs> uh, Hello. I'm Peter and I'm the Java guy. Uh, as I hope uh, many of you here, uh, I work uh, in JBoss Fuse team. Uh, JBoss Fuse uh, is a product uh, built on top of uh, Apache Camel that you may know and previously I worked in uh, JBoss EAP team. Uh, this is Marek. Hey, so my name is Marek. I work at Red Hat and I work with the cool stuff called OpenShift and Kubernetes. And I will be trying to be the opposite of Peter today. So uh, our roles here are really, I'm, I'm the Java guy who knows uh, how to code Java stuff and uh, Marek is the, the cloud guru who is supposed to know everything uh, about bringing Java applications or any other kind of application uh, to the cloud. Uh, our agenda uh, consists basically of uh, three steps. We start with a simple Spring Boot application. Uh, we gradually bring it uh, to the cloud and uh, in the end uh, there's a substantial part about the deployment strategies. <clears throat> so let's start uh, with the is this uh, Spring Boot application. Uh, <clears throat> it's actually my side project. Uh, a friend, uh, a friend coming from Austria has recently mentioned uh, that he needs this for somebody <clears throat> uh, working in uh, public administration. Uh, this is basically a simple application to s to schedule horse rides. Uh, you can think of it uh, as Uber for horse rides. You can order uh, a horse, and the horse will be, uh, uh, will be delivered uh, at a place, and you can make a ride, and then uh, then you give the horse back. The benefit of the horse is, is that you can actually let them go to the place. So you don't need any special AI to send the cars there. You can send the horse just Yeah, yeah, yeah. Horses are driving autonomously, so to say. And uh, actually, um, maybe the friend who has given me this project uh, uh, thinks that horses are the next big thing because uh, diesel engines are going to uh, get prohibited in German cities. So, or. I don't know. So this is a simple Spring Boot application that has just a couple of uh, entities. Uh, as here, uh, you can see we have we have a horse and a person that, that is supposed to ride on horse. Uh, horses are housed in stables. Uh, the stables have some uh, GPS coordinates so so that we can schedule a horse from the nearest uh, stable when somebody orders it. Uh, and there are, of course, rights uh, that this um, application is supposed to schedule. Uh, the CRUD endpoints are uh, provisioned by uh, Spring Data. There's just one uh, service that is doing something intelligent, and that's the, the right uh, scheduling. That is not finished, by the way, yet, but it doesn't matter much. And uh, there's a simple static UI that just that just uh, lists the uh, uh, rest endpoints. Uh, so this is my application. <coughs> uh, the customer wants us not only to de deliver the application; he wants us to to run it. So it means we are becoming true DevOps, and uh, it's actually up to us. Uh, how we run it, which tools we choose, and uh, that's why we actually uh, have Marek here. Marek, so so what 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 can you offer in this situation? Okay, so today everybody is speaking about containers, so I guess we should go with containers. Uh, so that the first step will be to containerize the application, and once we have a container, we need to run it somewhere. Uh, if you use uh, something like Docker itself, it is great for running on single machine, but if you want to do it on a cluster, you need some infrastructure. Uh, you need uh, some container orchestration system. And there has been some kind of battle between uh, different uh, different uh, orchestrators, but today it seems that the standard is becoming to be Kubernetes. Uh, 
Uh, is the Java EE standard, do you mean? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> it's a de facto standard uh, of how you actually do containers on a bigger scale. Uh, Kubernetes has been conceived by Google, and the two biggest uh, forces behind it actually is uh, Google and Red Hat. Oh, so no, no, but wait, 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 that's, yeah. that's a huge thing. How, how can I start with, with, with cloud, actually? Because uh, what should I do? Should I order a data center or...? You should definitely order a center if you can afford, afford it, uh, but <laughs> not really for today. Uh, it's very easy to set, uh, set up. Uh, there is something called mini shift or mini cube uh, that actually allows you to run a single node cluster on your machine. So if you don't want to actually order anything, you don't want to pay somebody to give you some infrastructure, you can do it on your own machine. You just download it from um, GitHub slash mini shift slash mini shift. Uh, it's a single uh, binary that you run on your machine. It creates a VM. It deploys OpenShift or Cube inside that, uh, that VM and you have it running. You can do pretty much everything that you would be doing in the, uh, in the cloud. You can do it on your machine. And that's actually what we are going to use, right? Uh, but wait a minute, uh, OpenSh OpenShift and Kubernetes, uh you said there's, there's some close relationship there, but um, yeah, with, with OpenShift, am I getting system D? <laughs> don't worry about it. You don't have to care about that. Uh, essentially, OpenShift is a distribution of Kubernetes. So if you do run uh, OpenShift, you run Kubernetes. You can treat it as Kubernetes if you want to, but you don't have to. And you can use something more high level that's provided there. But it's completely up to you. And we will see. OK. so. Now let's assume I have uh, installed Minishift uh, just right now. What what should I do? Can you make the font a bit bigger? Awesome. Can you read it from the from the back? Great. Uh, so what you need to do is to start Minishift. So Minishift space start. Don't do typos. Start and now. Okay, don't don't press return yet. Uh, so if you would do it, it would spin up a uh, mini shift for you, but it will give you the default configuration of resources, which is two gigs of memory and two C one CPU, I think, twenty gigs of space, which is not really what you want. So you need to specify how much memory, how much CPUs you want to dedicate to the VM. Okay, something like this, right? Yes, something like this, because this is Java, so two gigs, no good. But it's Spring Boot. Come on, you, you will see some cool stuff. Uh, so give it give it some resources. So 8 gigs should be fine. Uh, CPU 6, yeah, that's cool. And some disk space. Yeah, just okay. run it. Okay, let's assume I have started it, because I have started it in the past, because it needs some time to boot, so I just cancel it. And what it has started. What should I do now? You can, you can do now OC, who am I? Mm. OC is the client tool for OpenShift, and you see that you are already logged in as a developer user. That that, that would happen as the as the start command. You can also switch uh, to the web interface. How? Go to the browser. Oh, sorry. You can do it easier. A mini shift space console. Shift console. Enter. Yeah. There you go. So you are logged in. So this is OpenShift. This is something that's built on top of Kubernetes. Uh, if you have some already some experience with Kubernetes, you see that it's a bit more uh, application developer driven. Okay, there we are. So, what would be the next step for us? Uh, um, I want to bring my application in there. Okay, so do it. And how? Okay, go OC. OC. Okay, OC. OC. Space. New app. New with the dash app. and now your git repo my git repo okay and that's return. my host write service what's happening now at the background your wi-fi is slow you think so uh, it seems so it's there can you stop using your laptops and mobile phones please <laughs> <laughs> ah yeah Ah, but it's 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 there. Is it there? Okay, good. So we mean we just need to be patient, or what? What? What should something happen? should have happened already? Uh, should I try? Yeah. Look somewhere here. Yeah, it There's should. You will see something here once it happens. Ah. Oh, there we go. There we go. What? What? What happens? <laughs> A lot of magic happened. That's why it took a bit longer, and slow Wi-Fi. So. Um, 
Yeah, I guess you had a Jenkins file in your in your repo, right? Yes, I, I had a simple Jenkins file there. Okay, so because there was there was a Jenkins file, uh, OpenShift saw there is a Jenkins file, so it provisioned Jenkins for you uh, and started the build pipeline based on the Jenkins file. Um, can you switch to your Jenkins file? To my Jenkins file, okay. My Jenkins file is right here. Okay. Can you read this? At the back. Can you read it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is my Jenkins file. Yes. Uh, it builds with Maven, and that's all what it does. And actually, I have put skip tests here because I don't know how to provision a database. Uh, okay, that's fine. We will do it eventually. Um, can you go to the web interface again? So that's not the right one. This one. Yes, and go to pipelines. Uh, pipelines. Hmm. Pipelines. Okay. Pipelines. So, okay. So there is a some kind of rate condition bug. You need to cancel this one. This this build. So go to build one. Okay. Uh, cancel build. And yes, exactly like that. So now we scheduled a second build. Uh, and I can view the log for whatever that means. That means that you will be switched over to Jenkins and you will be able to see how OpenShift is running the build of your application inside the Jenkins instance that was provisioned. Uh, the biggest difference between a clean Jenkins that you would provision yourself and this one is that we already uh, inserted the OpenShift plugin. So uh, Jenkins and OpenShift has a way how to communicate with each other so they can link things together. So you see that there is something happening over here. Uh, there is a pipeline. Okay, this this looks like uh, a usual Jenkins console. So so once again, you said uh, when uh, the cluster saw my Jenkins file, it has provisioned Jenkins instance for me. Uh, it scheduled a build, but it didn't work because it was the first build. But and I have to uh, trigger it manually, and now it's just building what was there in the Jenkins file, right? Exactly. But that's actually very ni nice. It's running the build with skip tests. And if you switch over to the uh, web console of OpenShift again, you will see that there is a pipeline over there. And so it succeeded already. Yeah. It's the visualization of what was in your on your in your in a Jenkins file, and you see that all the steps finished because you skipped the test. Okay, but this is actually not all I need. As I said, uh, my customer wants me to run this. As DevOps, and uh, um, how 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 do I do it actually? Uh, you you said uh, I need uh, probably I need an image because Kubernetes is image based, right? And uh, how do I pro produce the image out of this? So you would be producing the image using something called Maven Fabricate plugin, uh, and you can switch to the next version of the of the Jenkins file here. Reset hard. Ah, that's the next. There version. we go. Maybe we just compare what it changed. It's a bit longer than the previous one. Okay, what's what's in there? Let me interpret. Uh, maybe, yes. maybe I understand something. So I don't understand this. What is OpenShift? That's that's an object. Uh, Jenkins file is a groovy based DSL. And uh, how does the DSL know what is OpenShift? What's so, that? So essentially, OpenShift is the materialization of the OpenShift plugin. So if you are using this object, you are actually communicating using the OpenShift plugin with OpenShift. And how did the plugin get in? That's what I mentioned before. Uh, it's because you provisioned the uh, Jenkins instance through OpenShift. They already injected uh, the plugin inside the instance of, of Jenkins. So it's very smooth experience. Okay, so so I I can understand this as a as a as a cluster client basically, right? Absolutely. And I can do some operations with the cluster using this object that is somehow there. Okay, and what am I doing here? Ah, here is new app. That's something similar as I did uh, before, but now there's not. There's not a Git repository, but something else. What's this? So you essentially deploying a Docker image uh, from Docker Hub, from the CentOS uh, organization, from the uh, registry 
uh, from the namespace uh, Postgres 95 CentOS 7 with the latest tag and you are putting some environment variables in there uh, so the database server knows how to configure itself when the image starts and there is the name uh, which names uh, the object that will be created for you okay so I start the database here and I am using some hard-coded user password and I'm passing them here to my Maven build. Ah, we should have started this build uh, to see if it uh, actually works and it will take some time till it succeeds. So, uh, but actually, I, 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 I may not push yet because uh, I actually want, uh, I don't want to work with uh, GitHub all the time because uh, my uh, source code is, is secret and I don't want to show it to the whole world and I don't want to pay for uh, GitHub private repositories. Is there a way to get a private repository inside the cluster? Uh, definitely, you can, by default, we don't, pro OpenShift doesn't provide you with Git repos, but it's pretty easy to provision something like Gox or GitLab, uh, which are open source and can run on top of the platform. So if people want to have Git repos hosted on top of the platform, they just deploy one of those. Okay, what else do I need to, to, to start with a real pipeline? You need the Jenkins, you need the source code, you need, and in, in your case, when you don't want to pay for the GitHub repos, you need the host self-hosted uh, Git hosting. Okay, so I see you provided some script that does all these preparations for me, uh, <coughs> including the internal Git repo and so on, and the script is there uh, in the repo that we shown yes. uh, previously. So let's assume the internal Git repo is there and I can uh, push my code there. Yeah, let's try it. So git push min shift Can source. you read it from the back? It's hard. Uh, uh, it's, it's gone. Let's look what happened in the cluster. So these are the projects that we have created. This mm -hmm. project one of the project is called CICD. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, I can see Gox, that's probably the Git repository inside the cluster. This is some uh, storage for it. And uh, I see there is a pipeline that already passed. Okay, we have to log in again into Jenkins. So you have essentially deployed a new Jenkins inside that project, different from the first one. So it's and that easy. here in the output, we should see somehow that the Jenkins inside the test is communicating with the freshly provisioned database. The output is quite long, but here there is Spring Boot. The, the, the container Spring Boot is starting, and somewhere there we should see some database com communication. I think it's we long. can just it's just long. just believe that it happens. <laughs> this uh, we can. Yeah, there we can see some selects and so on. This means the database is there, right? What's next? So you have essentially deployed Git hosting, you have deployed uh, Postgres to back it up, you have deployed uh, Jenkins, and you run your pipeline uh, to that uh, Jenkins using the Git uh, source code hosted inside your cluster. That's what happened just okay, right Okay, I have switched to the next stage that you prepared for me. And I have pushed it to the cluster. And now Ooh. inside the cluster, I'll just start the next build. And while it is building, uh, we can perhaps show what it actually does. So let's compare the, uh, the Jenkins file, what has changed there. So I can see you have you have added a new stage. Yes, I did. And at the beginning of the stage, you are uh, you are uh, invoking some Maven plugin. Uh, what's that actually? So that's Fabricate uh, Maven plugin. What it does is it it helps you to communicate with OpenShift or Kubernetes uh, from Maven. And in in this case, it would take your source code, upload it o over to the platform. 
uh, and through the Jenkins it would invoke something called source to image which is a tooling inside OpenShift that allows you to build images from source that's why source to image so um, you see that some um, you cannot see it here because there is a configuration uh, somewhere else right a configuration so I may configure the plugin to do something special for me right yes you can well, let's have a look uh, because Plugin configuration usually reside uh, inside POM XML, okay, mm -hmm. and these are the changes in POM XML. Yeah. So over here you see that there is a profile on the top, uh, which is OpenShift. So this profile is enabled by default OpenShift, so you can have different configuration from different environments. Uh, then there is a lot of other stuff, but you want to see the name with the percent percent G. Name, yes. this one. Exactly. What What's that? That's how you generate the name of your image. So when the image is created, uh, it will be named like 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 group slash uh, some name artifact and then a tag. So this is uh, this is the Docker stuff. When you build a Docker image, it will have this name, and it will be pushed over uh, to the internal registry that's running in OpenShift. So if you have Docker images, you want to distribute them, you need some kind of registry. So OpenShift by default. The by default has a registry in there, so you you essentially run the run the build. You give the build uh, the source code. It does all these kind of stuff, and once it's finished, it will be pushed okay, over to the Okay, once again, registry. So inside the cluster, I'm running a Jenkins instance that creates that builds uh, an image, and the image is is pushed into the cluster's internal uh, Docker registry. Okay. Yes. And that's how. The cluster elements see the the image. Okay. Yeah. So, so and this is the name under which uh, other parts of the cluster see the image that I have built. And uh, how do I tell the plugin what's there in the in the image? And it's probably here the assembly. Exactly. And I assume the assembly is just the us usual assembly plugins assembly that each of us actually knows. Pretty and much. here the port and shell. That's the usual. Uh, that's the usual Docker stuff that you probably know already. Okay, and uh, except for that, we have added the failsafe plugin to run uh, a true integration test against the uh, against the running container, and this is the this is the test. So, uh, as you may have noticed, I have pushed it. Uh, as you may have noticed, I have triggered a build, and the build succeeded. So uh, this is the this is the new integration test that was run against a container that is based on the image that we just built. Nice, good. Uh, what's next? What do you need? What do I need? Uh, I have the image. I have tested it. Mm, I probably want some way to 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 see it working to play with it a bit and I need a real production okay so what people sometimes do like it's not something that you have to do it's not, it's, it's a good practice so you can have multiple stages uh, in your uh, in your Jenkins file so one would show you a running application like a QA that you can click through uh, and then have a manual validation like click this button and then I will propagate this to production right so let's look at the at the changes in Jenkins file. As you said, you have added new stages. Okay, there's stage called stage and stage called production. Right in in stage stage, I am producing uh, uh, provisioning a database again. Okay, and I'm tagging. I am tagging, and that, let me guess what it means. It probably means that I take the the image I have built in the previous step and I am somehow storing it under a new tag called stage correct okay and then I'm calling new app with this new tag right that's correct so and but also look at the if that you have there if this one yeah so uh, if the deployment, uh, the DC is a deployment config, if the deployment doesn't exist yet, 
create a new deployment. So we deploy the Postgres database. Uh, uh, sorry, we had the database already. It was the if before that. But now we are deploying just the service if it doesn't exist. Uh, and if you check the else branch of this script, else here, nothing to do because deployment config already exists. And the deployment config has something called trigger. Uh, the trigger can monitor uh, images in, a uh, in the Docker registry. And when there is a new image for that particular name and tag, it can trigger a deployment of the application. So in the first step, uh, when you run the pipeline for the first time, it will create the deployment for you. And whenever you do the, the like following steps, uh, following runs, uh, it only retakes uh, the image that was built in the first step, call it stage, and the deployment already is there, and it sees like whenever there is a new image for this name, do the redeployment. So you don't have to redeploy it every time, single time. Just refresh the image when it comes. Okay, I see. Uh, would this work on plain Kubernetes? No. Uh, plain Kubernetes doesn't have um, something what we call image streams, so it cannot track images in time. Uh, it essentially, when you trigger deployment, it deploys whatever is there. It doesn't have a more deeper knowledge of what's directly in there in cube, uh, in the in the in the image, so it wouldn't work. The triggers don't work. Those are OpenShift specific. Okay. So then, uh, what we do? Okay, there's some input. Uh, input. I know input. That's a construct for from Jenkins files, and we just ask the user for approval if he won, uh, wants to proceed. And what we show to the user is uh, if he wants this uh, staged image to be promoted to the production. Let's have a look uh, into, the, into the log of Jenkins. Oh, we have not started it. What a pity. Hmm. It will take some time. Uh, as long as it runs. Can you switch to the web interface of OpenShift? Yeah, it's still going there. Okay. So the progress can be tracked from here or can be tracked from the log inside but Jenkins. As long as uh, it reaches the approval, we can have a look what happens in the production state. So once again, we provision a database first uh, and then we actually use the same technique again, uh, meaning that we take the stage tag and uh, we store the same image under a new name called production and we create the, uh, the application of the, of the production, star, uh, production tag inside a dedicated uh, production project. Okay, and once uh, this is ready, the cluster or the, the, the lock of Jenkins ask, uh, doesn't ask, it just tells us that the new image is there in production and shows us the URL that we can click uh, in the lock. So let's look what happened in the in the Jenkins lock, uh, it's building. Ah, <coughs> oh, it's probably the old uh, version. Did Never you, mind. Did you push the git? I probably haven't pushed, which is my fault. And I won't be pushing uh, because we would lose quite a lot of time. Uh, we will see the manual approval in next steps uh, again. So let me let let me switch to the next uh, to the next uh, version of the of the demo project um, we are there that we are able to click through the application in the staging environment you have to trust us Yes, you are cheating a bit, sorry. <laughs> uh, we are able to promote manually and we are there in production. We have production environment where, where the application uh, is, is working, hopefully. And if there's something wrong, uh, I have... I don't have any choice to, uh, to, to switch back easily. 
to the old working uh, to the old working state. But actually, uh, as we all know, there are uh, quite well established uh, strategies to handle with, the, uh, with this. Uh, one of them is called blue green and uh, blue green uh, deployments. And uh, I have a slide. Uh, what it means basically that we have uh, two versions of the application. Uh, one of them is the, is the old one, which is considered stable, runs for some time, uh, and the new one uh, that we just just needs to be proven uh, in production. We just label these two. Uh, states uh, of the application uh, with, with two different colors, blue and green. And we have some element, we need some element uh, in the infrastructure to switch between them. So Marek, what, what's the element uh, inside Kubernetes that can, that can switch? So in Kubernetes it would be a bit different. Uh, what we would do is uh, to use the OpenShift element, which is called route. So the route is going to be pointing at um, at a service. Service is something that whenever you do a deployment, it will create, a, let's say, a proxy that has a stable IP address, a stable entry point to application. So whenever uh, we have blue or green, we will change the service that our uh, route should be pointing at, and it will uh, send the traffic to the other one. So the, the thing is with blue-greens, you do that or that. Uh, you don't have a split. You always do 100% on one side or 100% on the other side. Okay, let's uh, check that we are on master. Let's check that we actually push to mini shift. We have pushed to mini shift. Let's go uh, to builds and let's start a build. And hopefully now it will build what we are, what we want to see. Let's see. Yes, we can see here the the uh, commit message, and it said uh, that it's the gr blue green blue color first. But uh, how have we done that uh, on the level of uh, Jenkins file? So let's compare the Jenkins file with the previous state again. Here we are doing some scaling. Uh, what's the reason for that? Uh, you are using Java, uh, so and you have only some limited resources on your machine. So we are effectively once you go through the uh, staging part, we scale it down to zero, which is like idling. So there are no instances of the application running. So we can save some okay. memory, some resources. Hey, here we are scaling to zero, and at the beginning we are scaling to one. And the reason is yep. that all containers are running uh, on this laptop, and we don't want to have too many uh, running at once. So we are uh, idling them, uh, those ones uh, that we create in, uh, in th these two first stages. And the change is not related to blue-green deployments. Okay? But now let's see what has changed uh, really. This is in stage, which is still not so interesting. The main change is in production. And in production, I first figure out what's the current color. And the current color uh, is stored there in the root. And as Marek said, the root is the element that is able to switch the traffic between uh, two versions of the, uh, of, of uh, between two distinct deployments, let's say. Let because me just say, can I clarify again? Uh, by default, everything that runs inside uh, OpenShift or Kubernetes is on the internal network. So you cannot reach it from outside. It usually can reach outside from the cluster, but you cannot go easily inside the cluster. So that's why there is something called routes or ingress or something that allows you to bridge the outside world with the internal world, allows the communication from outside of the cluster inside the cluster to our applications. Okay, so now uh, we are going to work with those colors, blue or green. Uh, we are running this for the first time, so the, the new color uh, should be blue for us, hopefully. Uh, here the tech step has changed because uh, now we are using the colored 
uh, version of the of what of of the image name. The names are essentially a free form. Uh, well, not 100% uh, if you want to do with all the security aspects that OpenShift provides. But in Docker world, you can freeform, like, name it as, as you So here need. in this case, I create a, a blue tag. And I create the blue deployment here with the new application command. If it doesn't exist, if it exists, uh, here again, uh, creating the tag would trigger deployment uh, of the application and rollout of the new version of the of the image. Here I am scaling to one, uh, the blue color, the new one. And uh, here delete. I am deleting uh, the colorless deployment that I had previously, uh, to just to uh, demonstrate the the production state. And here I am doing the switching. Of the root. Uh, if the root didn't exist previously, I just create it with the new color. And if it existed, I'll switch the color to the. Uh, I'll switch the target of the root uh, to the new color. Right. And I'll show the user what's the what's the URL of the uh, freshly deployed application. So now we see the real stage, right? It's asking us if this is good enough to be promoted to production. If I click on this, it will show me what is staged. Staged is blue and uh, production should be still... sorry... production should be colorless. Uh, so I change this to prod. Oh, prod is not there. Because you didn't promote it in the first step. Ah, that's why, you see. Okay. So I should... So over here you can see that uh, the integration between OpenShift and Jenkins actually is on the input level as well. It just gets you directly to the page where you can do the manual step in Jenkins directly from the web interface. Okay, so we are cheating again. Imagine that there was a colorless uh, background, white background, uh, in the production uh, originally, Thank and you. it failed. Ah, oh, well, what's this? It's probably that the, the step before uh, wasn't done properly. I think we must stop cheating and do the stage prod properly, build it, and then the, the green, blue, green should work, <coughs> which will take us some time. Do you want to give some time to questions now? Or yeah, that's a good idea. Are there any questions in the audience? I'm not sure how it works with the mics. Any questions? I cannot see the middle side because there is the strong light. No. Okay. Yeah. So if I would have um, stop open shift on my end, so it would stop the stage. Uh, yeah, so OpenShift container platform is the product, if you go into production, let's say. And OpenShift origin is the uh, open source project that the product is built from. Uh, all the development, all the features are in the upstream, and then we productize it in the platform. Th so essentially, if you do go with the open source, you get all the features. What you don't get is the know-how, support, uh, etc. from Red Hat. So you will be on your own, or community-based support uh, in the production. Red Hat as the biggest, uh, or one of the biggest contributors to Kubernetes and Docker, so and kernel. So we know 
like we have knowledge and expertise through all the stack from top to bottom so we can help you there if you have problems that's the biggest value plus certifications and uh, uh, you know uh, courses and teaching you how to do stuff help you when they get stuck feature wise if you go with the open source version it will be fine like there's all the features are there okay I think we have total bad luck today uh, the the demo really? gods are against us so <laughs> I think we just stayed uh, we uh, stay with the material we have here uh, in the demo repository and stop provisioning because uh, it simply doesn't work so we were here uh, in the blue green and uh, we had uh, a switch to green prepared for you that's here and the switch to green uh, consists just in uh, changing the back, uh, background uh, of the of the index uh, HTML page and uh, when we run it uh, it should actually show us that we have uh, we have uh, switched to green and uh, we also wanted to show that we can uh, switch back uh, to blue but because the blue didn't work uh, the switch back to blue wouldn't work either because uh, in the cluster there's no working blue version <laughs> uh, I may uh, but let's say let's go let's go to canaries and i'll try to reset my uh my cluster into the state where canaries may work so reset the repo and we can show some some theory we have to ah we haven't named this ones uh when we do um blue greens uh, we are switching all the traffic at once and uh, there are two well-known problems with it uh, first the new deployment uh, must be able to handle uh, the database schema changes somehow and the same must hold for a rollback so if, if we roll back uh, from blue to green uh, back and forth uh, all versions uh, of deployments must be compatible with all versions of the database schema which is not always easy to get but uh, maybe uh, Marek is there some trick that uh, Kubernetes or OpenShift can help me in this situation well if you're like if your changes are not compatible you will not be able to freely move so what you can do is effectively when you have incompatible changes like reset the state move up and then do rollbacks only au after uh, the incompatible changes and do those in some special case uh, special ways OpenShift and cube uh, they have um, when you are deploying the containers you can also add something called uh, mid deployment uh, open shift you can do at mid deployment hook uh, which allows you to do something in the middle of your deployment uh, when your containers would be down you can do migration then they would all come up again uh, which is one of the ways how we can help there but with the blue greens uh, or if you want to do something more uh, more fancy usually it's good to be state less application like have no state in the application outsource it to somewhere uh, either have a uh, the, the, the sessions have some some distributed cache or something databases to be uh, backward compatible etc etc uh, most of the things have been covered years back in 12 factor applications if you follow those, uh, you will cover most of the problems that you will have. Okay, and uh, when it comes to database uh, schema changes, uh, you should definitely read uh, Edson's book. Uh, I mean, Edson Yanaga, that is supposed to have ses next session now. Uh, and he has written a whole book about it. And uh, there are many small details in the book that might you might find uh, interesting. Um, so let me now try to bring uh, my cluster into the state uh, that would be able to to digest the canary change and I have somewhere 
a script here that deletes all objects that might be there hanging. So I'm still there as a developer and I'll delete uh, all deployments and services and probably this would allow me to run the build. To Don't do this in production. No, <laughs> not fail. Okay, I'm on the right revision here. I'll push to the cluster. And in the cluster, I'll trigger the next build. And I'll pray to the demo gods <laughs> that this will somehow work. Uh, while it's running, uh, let's have a look at uh, how we do canaries, actually. So, uh, with blue greens, all the traffic were either there or there. With canaries, uh, we are gradually rolling out the new version. At the beginning, there's just a small part of the traffic sent to the new canary. Uh, and the rest of the traffic uh, goes to the original stable uh, deployment. And we are observing the canary for some time, uh, how it behaves, and uh, if it's passing our checks, we we'll gradually increase the amount of traffic that is going to canary up to 100%. And uh, in that moment, the, the canary becomes uh, original, stable, and uh, we can try a new canary. Okay? What it looks like uh, in the Jenkins file, You just compare again. We are skipping tests so that it runs faster. Uh, we are skipping the integration tests too. And uh, probe here. Marek, what is probe? So in, in this case over here, uh, it's, a, it's a health probe. So uh, LiveNest and readiness probes are there directly in Kubernetes that check if the container is still up and ready. Uh, if it fails to do one of those uh, probes, uh, it will be restarted or somehow handled based on the state that it actually is in. So uh, the, the readiness probe checks if the container is already up and running. So it will not be connected to, like it will not be allowed to receive new connections, new stuff until the application is up. So you can, s you because like, I don't know, uh, Spring Boot, I'm not, not sure how fast Spring Boot is, uh, but some Java application servers, they have long startup time. Okay, right. let's shorten it because we have uh, no time. Uh, I have uh, implemented uh, a special health uh, endpoint that uh, that is cheating. Uh, it's returning what we need uh, for the sake of this demo. And in this revision, it's always returning 200, which means success. Uh, basically, with canaries, it's up to me as a Java developer to decide uh, how I will describe, uh, how, how I will assess that my application is healthy. And in this case, I'm fully cheating, it's healthy all the time. And uh, here, further, there's a loop that checks the health of the new deployment. And uh, if it sees uh, 200 uh, for like uh, 20 seconds, it checks 10 times and waits for two seconds. Uh, it uh, considers the deployment uh, stable and promotes uh, uh, it to pro uh, it's uh, sends 100 percent of the whole traffic there. At this the beginning, we are splitting the traffic 50/50 to the new and old, and at the end here we are sending 100 to the new. If this succeeded, right? And this is a hack. So uh, this is something good for demos. If you go into production or do something ah, real work, it, it failed, you definitely sorry. want to do something more rigorous, uh, how to determine if your canary is alive. So you would be monitoring, uh, getting metrics from your application. And based on that, you would actually make the decision, not if you, your application re gives you for 20 seconds uh, 200, right? Uh, that's, that's good for liveness checks. That's not good for promotions. Okay, as you can see, uh, the build failed in the middle, not where uh, it was supposed to. Uh, I'm sorry about it. We are out of time. Uh, please check the demo uh, in the repository. Uh, 
these are basically things we want you to remember from this application, uh, from this uh, uh, presentation. There's Minikube Minishift for starting experimenting. You can deploy it on your laptop and if you take care how many uh, containers you are running, you can do nice things with it. Uh, there's Jenkins Pipeline that is uh, considered a first-class citizen on OpenShift and it's uh, unfortunately not the case on plain Kubernetes. And Jenkins file is powerful enough to script your own deployment strategies, however you think it out for you. And the source of the, this demo is there. Thank you. Thank you. And sorry. There is still time for a QA if you want to. 